we start? All right, thanks everyone for coming tonight. I really, really appreciate it. And um, I'll quickly do my little bit of this uh, show. Um, somebody asked me how long I've been at this patient here, and I think it's been five years, 10 months, and uh, 19 days. And in the course of that time, uh, I've often been in the uh, parish, what we call the library. It's the room on the ground floor of the, uh, the building here on the corner, you know, talking to people about one thing and another. And as I would do that, of course, uh, little kindergarten children would uh, often process west up the sidewalk and then east down the sidewalk and west up the sidewalk and east. And I would sit there and watch that. And uh, frankly, it it, uh, it enchanted me because what's cuter than a kindergartner, huh? And it alarmed me um, because of the amount of traffic on Main Street, which I know is only going to get worse because of impending development in our neighborhood. And uh, then my alarm was uh, amplified when some of the kindergarten teachers would from time to time come up to me and go, we had a close call today, you wouldn't believe what happened. And I'm thinking, oh God. So um, uh, I try to do my duty, you know, whatever you think of my uneven performance, I tried to do my duty. And I thought, you know, we got to look at um, getting our kindergarten out of here. We've got to do that. And over on the Baltimore Street side. And you know, that's just kind of about as far as my thinking went, because particularly when it comes to education, I'm not very imaginative, as the people at Hollis and Miller will tell you. Um, you know, when I matriculated from the time I was in first grade to the time, you know, I, I finished eight years of seminary, it was always the same. You had a long aisle, and at the top of the aisle there was a, a little ratty desk and a figure up there at the top, male or female, sometimes in a religious habit with a piece of chalk in their hand, and they would mash around on the board and we would take notes, and uh, at the end of so many weeks and months, we would uh, get a report card, and that was called education. And um, hey, it worked out great. You know, I know my ABCs and one, two, threes, so I don't know why we can't just keep doing that. But I tell them that, and they laugh at me. See, and um, so I'm figuring, well, you know, I must be, I must be kind of hopelessly behind. And then uh, Paulus and Miller, who we engaged to, to do this, this moving kindergarten project, took us around to a few different educational spaces. And that was kind of an eye opener for me. Um, man, we, we have, I think it's fair to say, uh, potentially a long way to go in um, what we could do to improve our pedagogical environment. Now, I mean, we don't have to do anything, right? I mean, really, whatever we do, it's up to you. You know, well, far, far more than it's up to me. But there are a lot of things that we could do. And in order to make an informed decision about whatever we do to uh, uh, physically help our school, you need to know what, what we might do, you know, what the possibilities are. And that is the purpose of this meeting here tonight, uh, to give the professional architectural people a chance to tell you what they have discerned about um, our school and uh, what, what our possibilities are. So that's, that's the background. Is that, do you think that covers it, Deuce? Is that pretty much covered? Okay. So I'm going to hand this over to uh, the Hollis and other folks and uh, let them do their thing. Good evening. Thank you, Monsignor, for that opening. That sets the stage perfectly. Um, I'm Sandy Cochran. I'm with Hollis and Miller Architects. Um, we have quite a bit to do today, so I hope you're not too comfortable in your chairs. 
Um, but to set the stage, we want to walk you through some of the processes that we have been brought on to work with visitation on. Specifically, that's a master plan. So as one senior mentioned, there was one specific goal that came up and that was moving kindergarten. But there were lots of other things that also came to light that could be addressed with visitation, not only in the current, but also in the future. And so tonight we're gonna to walk you through a little bit of what we've been doing the last several months with your leadership team and your school faculty. Um, and then we wanna hear your feedback. So you're sitting here tonight as either a parent or a future parent or just an interested family um, that is a member of visitation or a future member of visitation. And we wanna hear your feedback on some of the things we've been entertaining um, as a future plan for, for your parish. So as I mentioned, I'm Sandy Cochran. Uh, we have Keegan Jackson, who's the senior partner on Hollis and Miller here tonight. We also have Nicole Rizai, who's an interior designer. And then we have Matt Evett, who, sorry, Evett, yes. Uh, he's with Confluence, he's a landscape architect, but he's also a parent and a member of your parish. Um, so Hollis and Miller is unique in that we work exclusively on 100% education projects. That's what we do. We build schools, we renovate schools, every level of education from early childhood all the way through um, higher ed. So anything that is touching an educational environment, whether or not it's athletics, um, theater, classrooms, et cetera, that is something that we work with. So tonight, like I said, we have quite a bit to go through, so feel free to come up and ask us questions. If I've talked too fast or missed anything, that's why we're here. Um, we also have members of your leadership team here. We have Mary and Kelly from the school, Monsignor, we have Megan, and then other members of your building committee are also here. They've been involved in taking time out of their schedules to meet with us, so please feel free to ask questions. We're here to hear what you have to say um, throughout this entire process. So we're gonna walk you through our schedule, um, basically a lot of these steps that we've done so far, and then we have, like I said, we have some activities, that's what these boards are up for, but we wanna have you take part in tonight. So what's very important about Hollis and Miller that's a little bit unique is that we have a co-create process. And what this means is that we don't come to the table with any preconceived notions of what may work best for your school or for your parish. We wanna hear from you. And this meeting tonight is a, in a specific example of that. We wanna hear from you. You are the experts on your children and your learning environment, what works best for your families. We wanna hear from you on that. We're design experts and we can tell you what we think but we wanna to work together through this process to make sure that it's a tailored solution for you um, at the very end. So for our master plan, we have a five-step process. Step one is we essentially set a game plan. We talk about what are the big <coughs> goals? What, are, what do you wanna achieve through this plan? We ask that question at the very get-go. So we went through that with the building committee as well as your leadership team, um, set some specific goals. Then we went through collecting data. So we assess the building, the school building specifically, as well as the campus. Um, and as you guys know, that school building has some age on it. So there's some other needs that don't necessarily pertain to the moving of kindergarten, but also just updating some of your classrooms. So we went through all of that. Um, then we went to step three, which is planning criteria. So we wanted to talk about what were the criteria that you wanted to use in order to prioritize possible projects, okay? And then the next step is exploring options, and that's what we start to talk about with the planning arrangements, projects, et cetera, and then we adopt that. So the end of that plan, you have an idea of what the future goals are for your school and for your parish. So right now tonight, we are sitting at the very beginning of exploring options. And this is a perfect opportunity of why we scheduled this meeting tonight. Um, some of the boards that are sitting over here that I'll reference a little bit later are some of the options we're starting to talk about as future planning for the school building. So as we started this process, we wanted to understand what the opportunities and the challenges were for your school. And so we created this map and started talking about what are all the uses as well as some of the things to know for some of the spaces. And I'm not gonna walk through every single one of these. But just to, to bring up exactly what one senior mentioned is we've got kindergarten drop off over here and then we have this passageway all the way from the church building over to the school. And well, that's a primary point. And then there's this, this large open area that's used for a variety of events that aren't necessarily specific to school. Then you have Baltimore and you have a crossing zone here that goes back and forth and you have kiddos walking daily, multiple times across that, that street. So we wanted to be able to highlight all the different areas around the school that's not just pertaining to the building but as an overall campus. Okay, so this went into our data collection and discovery. 
And so as I mentioned, as part of our review is we assessed your building. We walked the roof, we went through every classroom, every hallway, we looked in your electrical rooms, walked through the back areas, looked and see if there were drainage problems on the back of the school building, looked at your parking lot, everything. And we came up with a list. As part of that, we also talked to your faculty, we talked to your building staff, to your leadership team, and said, what are you aware of that may be a problem or that is a challenge for your building? And we started to create a list. I'm not gonna read this entire list to you, it's pretty lengthy, but there were some things that were highlighted that were a higher priority versus others. And some, we were, they, the leadership team wasn't necessarily aware of when we started walking. So we did that for the interior, um, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, looked at all the restrooms, as well as the exterior and started to look at playgrounds, parking lots, sidewalks, et cetera. And from there, we started to talk about what are the priorities that come out of that list? What's the most important? What do you want to start allocating possible dollars to to start upgrading? So it's a big list, as I just went through. How do you, what do you say is the most important? We help through that entire process. But part of it, we walk the leadership through planning priorities. And what these basically mean is we start to talk about What's the top priority? Kindergarten, moving them over, but then what are the upgrades to the building that we can also set as a priority? We said, well, what are the things that would be nice to have, but not necessarily a must, okay? Because there are other pieces that come into this. It's not just the current students at visitation, but also the future students. What's going to be a draw to attract other families to send their students there to be making the top priority for enrollment? And then we talk about what are some things that we can save for in the future, or we want to plan towards, bringing on different types of staff to support new curriculum programs. And then we say, okay, maybe that's something that's not a goal for visitation, that's not something we want to attain to. And these start to identify criteria. Now as we start to talk about these, there's two things that are important. One, there's the building, and then there's the people in it. Okay, so we, we, we put these on a path, kind of in that same type of idea of a sliding scale. So the first thing is we have to have foundational elements that go with your building. You gotta have a roof, you gotta have walls, windows, you gotta have heating and cooling. Those have to function in order for people to use the building, right? Those are number one. If those aren't working, we have to work on those. So that's, that's the top one. Number two is, do you have enough staff to support your students? Do you have the foundational elements in the classroom in order to teach? Do you have projectors? Do you have marker boards? Do you have chairs? That's step two. Step three is, what is supporting the growth mindset for your students? What can we help support them through curriculum, giving the teacher better, better tools to use to support the, um, the teaching of your kid? And then number three is, what are those things that are the wow factor? What can we do that's amazing and great? If we can get all of those elements worked into this pathway, then we have success at the end. And this is where the priorities and the criteria really come into play. So we worked through these with your leadership and your building committee, and these are some of the priorities that came out of this. Safe and secure facilities and play spaces, high quality building infrastructure, and the incorporation of technology. Those are foundation elements that visitation wanted to see for your students, okay? Step two, integrate early childhood, identify student to teacher ratios, and support for high quality staff. Third, learning and play spaces for all. We all know that the, a lot of the spaces are being utilized beyond their original type use. Storage rooms, old offices are all being reutilized for, for learning spaces and for parents. So you'll see this, this space area come up quite a bit tonight. And then some of those future wows. How about student-centered and inquiry-based learning, hands-on learning, project lead the way type of programs, things that you're seeing implemented in, as a new type of learning for students that's inclusive for all a variety of learning spaces and different types of approach, approaches for um, instruction. And then we have success. So you all probably saw a survey come out not too long ago um, that was pumped out through uh, the newsletter, email, and then also on the website. We have a lot of respondents to that survey, so I'm going to share some of the highlights that also go into some of these priorities. So we had 33 staff respond um, to the survey, which is great. And if you guys may or may not have taken that survey, it asked a question at the beginning. It said, are you a faculty member? Are you a parent? Are you a parish member? Are you just a community member? And depending on how they answered that question, they would get different types of questions going through. Some of them were the same for everyone, and some of them weren't. And that was allowing us to decipher some of the data. And some of the common themes that came through from the staff is they wanted more storage of technology, 
Safe spaces and protocols are a must for that. Implement spaces to support small group work and unique instruction, and then differentiated learning spaces. This was a, this was a key item that came up very specifically many times. Maximize the courtyard space for better learning opportunities, and great kids come from great adults. Focus on the staff input and development. So these were the things that repeated or got high um, respondent uh, results. And then for the parishioners, we got 282 respondents. That's huge. That's really good for a survey like this. That means that your parish is responding and they want to hear. Some of them never have any re uh, relationship with the school, but they know it's there. And so they went ahead and responded. And so this is how it breaks down. This large blue is for school and parent or alumni, 71%. Orange is a parish member, but they're not affiliated with the school. Green was parish staff, and then other was a grandparent or a retired staff member. So their common themes came up as exterior and interior safety, <coughs> teacher recruitment and retention, equity and learning level approaches, it's basically early childhood through high school, technology planning, future ready skill sets. Oops. And so as you can see, there's some equity between the two of these. You're seeing a lot of response. I'm going to share this with you tonight for those of you that took it. And just to know that we are, again, that engagement component we're responding to this, we're hearing you, and some of the things you're gonna to see tonight are in direct relation to this. So these are the specific quotes that we heard, and as I mentioned, some of the spaces was a big one that came up. You're out of space. You're out of ability to allow your teachers to work outside of the classroom in different types of environments. And so learning spaces that were used outside of the classrooms were the cafeteria and the hallways. So if you guys have walked through the hallways, Every square inch is being used for a desk or a breakout space for the parents, for the counselors, and for just students to be able to do one-on-one -on -one work. And these are some of the quotes that we heard from the staff. The inability to have breakout spaces that can support different types of activities simultaneously. The cabinets are high and require a chair to reach. We need to consider how best to provide engaging learning opportunities and spaces to support. That's, that's key. Right? That's, how you're gonna, that's how you're going to engage with your students that are in visitation right now and be able to attract other families to come in and experience the curriculum that's available. So as Monsignor mentioned, as we got into this, we wanted to talk about other opportunities and different types of learning environments. And I didn't put the photo up here, but I thought about it, of the nun in the corner with the older desk and the students sitting in their desks, very, you know, proper. Don't move, don't talk, and chalkboard and chalk. We don't have chalkboards and chalk anymore. But I almost put it in here just to kind of you. As he said, that's how he envisions learning. That's a schoolroom to him. But as you all well know, that's not how we teach anymore. It's similar, but it's changing. We're trying to engage with different types of learners. And so we took the building committee on some tours of some projects that have been recently completed that are similar to what we could possibly do here at Visitation. And those two locations was Mason Elementary School. This one was unique in that it's, it was an existing elementary school that we renovated, and then we also did an addition. And there was a lot of care taken that the renovated areas matched the addition. So you could sense when you walked into the addition, because some of the ceilings were higher, the spaces were a little bit bigger, but overall it was very consistent. We wanted to show that, because as you may know, there was a property that was purchased to the north of the, of the current school building that we've talked about using as an addition to the school. So we wanted to show that parity. The other location that we looked at was St. E's Early Childhood, just down the road, but a lot of your building committee and some of your leadership hadn't seen that. And if they had, they hadn't looked at it in the light of what is possible for us. And so this was unique in that it, St. E's had Early Childhood, but it was across the street. So there was a safety concern from them as well, as far as those kids, kid was being right down 75th Street. They added it on to the other side um, of the worship area, so they're very adjacent. There's literally one door that can get into the sanctuary right there. Um, they were they were a little bit condensed on space, and so they raised their uh, play area to the second level. So this fenced-in area right here, if you haven't seen it, this is a play area that's outside the balcony that they can play, and it's completely safe and isolated. So back to this planning priority. 
we use this as a as a, a gauging tool through all these parties. So I showed you that really long list, right? Well, I see some yawns, but don't worry, we're gonna make you up here. <laughs> I'll talk, I'll stop talking eventually. Um, so we walked through an exercise with post-its and boards with your leadership group, and we talked to them about those priorities. We took the survey results, we took the things we had heard from the building committee, and we worked through what's important for visitation. And we came up with some key criteria, and those options that I talked about that were right at the beginning of that step, we're gonna weigh all of those options against these criteria all the way through, okay? So these top five were adequate space to group and room to grow, flexibility in spaces, appropriate and variation in collaboration spaces, six through eight grade space experience and identity, creating something different for those middle school kiddos, making them feel like when they get to sixth grade, okay, I'm in a different space, different building, we're in the top levels right now, but how can we make that even more different? Small rooms require rethinking, teaching space, and storage. So these are, these are your criteria we're gonna add to all of the options that we consider. Okay, top priorities. Student safety and security. This came up in the surveys as well as your leadership. These are the items that will be right now a top priority for visitation moving forward. Guided secure entry, as well as playground access across Baltimore. Student access to the church for mass. Upgrades to the fire alarm security and a campus identification. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we started to look at visitation as a campus, not just individual buildings, but how can we work all of these spaces together so that you have a cohesive concept. So as people are coming down Maine, they realize, hey, I'm entering into a different space. Is there something we can do at the streetscape to identify if you're driving through school area to slow down? Same thing on Baltimore. Is there some identification that we can do that's different at the street level? Second, relocation of kindergarten. These are not in a particular order. As Monsignor brought up, what are the opportunities we have here? Do we try to work kindergarten into the existing school footprint now, or do we look at addition opportunities to create more space? And then third, early childhood. This came up mentioned early on in the process as not being a priority, but the further we've gone through it over the last couple months, it keeps on being brought up. It was a high item that was rated on the survey as an interest to the parish. And so we started to really look at that as an opportunity to add, to bring in um, early learners and hopefully retain them all the way through. Okay. So real lightly, I'm gonna touch on, as we started to look at all your spaces, we started to categorize them into different types of spaces. Academic for classrooms and curriculum, academic for specials, meaning gym, media center, art, etc. Sport spaces or supports, not sports, support spaces, um, all the areas that support your students and your staff. So you've got the kitchen, gym, storage, these are all spaces that need to be within your school to support your learners. And so what we do is we literally start with bubbles. If you guys have ever heard of bubble diagrams, we do that. Um, it's very similar to what you're gonna see on these layouts over here. We start to put things together, and the reason we group them this way is what adjacencies are important. How close does the gym need to be to the office? How close does specials need to be to the classrooms? So we start to talk about those before we actually give them four walls. Okay. So this is your site. You'll see this on one of the boards as well. Just wanted to show this as a reference as, you're, as we're talking through some of these spaces. So this central area right here, as you know, is your parking lot. We're gonna start calling this the quad because there's some opportunities here that we wanna engage this area. As I showed on that very early slide, all the opportunities that you guys use that area for, it's not only parking, it's not only pick up and drop off, use it for things on the weekends, for events. So there are different ways to engage this central area between your two main buildings that we haven't thought about or developed. You have your play area that's part of it that also needs to be addressed and upgraded. Baltimore Avenue, the courtyard, that's been talked about extensively. We love the natural light that comes in from the courtyard, but how can the space be used to better benefit the school? The addition property that's possible to the north of the school, Main Street at the d first Terms. I'm not gonna hover on these, but we wanted to show these tonight as the possibilities that we are considering for expansion. So there's three layouts right now that we're talking about. All of this is up for change. Nothing has been decided. Again, this is why we're showing this tonight. We want to hear your feedback if you have any you want to get, or you can just absorb, and we can talk about the other opportunities that we have as well. 
We have a courtyard addition that we're talking about, engaging the courtyard in different ways, maybe building out into it, adding on to it, and then two possible building additions. One of them is showing the addition of an, of an early childhood program on one level. The others are just showing the expansion of classrooms. Okay. So those are located over here. If you want to take a look, if you have any comments, feel free to share those with us. And one thing I just want to note, this is a plan. Nothing has been officially decided tonight other than some of the priorities that we've walked you through. So if you have any questions or comments, please come up to us while we break for some of these activities that Nicole's gonna walk you through. But your building committee, your leadership team, they're all here. We wanna hear your feedback. That's why we're excited that you're here tonight. Hey, Sam, uh -huh. could you just ask for the members of the building committee that are here to stand so they know who those people are? That's great, someone else gets to stand up. Okay, so if you're in the building committee, could you please stand up? You know, a couple of things occur to me as really salient points that it might be good to add as background knowledge. Um, most of you know Linda Hughes, right? Linda's got a daughter named Stella who was uh, surfing the internet one day and came to see that the 1926 sixplex just north of the school was for sale. Well, when that was reported to me, we very quickly got the parish council, the finance committee, and the diocese together and bought that building with the purpose of, of, of uh, renovating our education space and possibly getting on to it. I know that's already been mentioned, but I'm underscoring it because it should be a very clear sign to you of how seriously we take all of this. Second point. Um, we have a teacher retiring this year named Laura Keneally, right? Um, who's been here for a long, long time. And you know, we had a meeting in this room last week, and Laura said something interesting to me. Uh, I don't know how long he's been here, but I guess maybe two decades or something like that. Maybe maybe longer than that. And it, she said that you know, uh, for much, maybe most of its history, the visitation was a two-room. Uh, per grade institution. It only went to a three room per grade institution as a temporary measure. Um, and it's, it's come on. You may wonder, you know, one of, one of the most, one of the biggest questions in front of us is, should it stay that way? You know, should visitation stay three sections per grade? Should it go back down to two? I don't know the answer to that question. But I want you to notice that on these projected floor plans, it is being planned to remain a three room per grade school. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I honestly don't. I'm going to need a lot of your, your thought about that. Um, man, it seemed like it was something else I wanted to say too that struck me as important, but I, I can't remember it now. But those two things are, are critical. with you um, just to find out what is important to you for your your kids and your students in the schools what will make this project a success to you through uh, for the students for the staff as well as for your parish community so we have boards all around the space and the first board you'll see over if this works um, is for building priorities. So we have a gauge um, north-south of kindergarten shift. So move the school, move to the existing school building for the kindergartners or keep them in their existing space. So we're gonna give you some dots and you can put your dots which direction you believe um, aligns with your priority there. Um, same with early childhood program, new program or no early childhood program, as well as um, building addition. Do you believe that we should use that property as a, for a building addition or should we renovate the existing school with no addition? So you'll put your dot where you feel you align best with. And if you're in the middle and you don't you know, feel either way, put your dot in the middle and we also have post-its. So if you wanna write a comment with that, you can put a post-it along with your dots. Um, we also have a site plan with um, each
area label and you'll see for one is the future edition. <coughs> so if you have any comments regarding that, we have post-its that you can write comments, um, questions, concerns, um, any positives or negatives you feel with that future edition, any, anything you'd like to write on those post-its, go ahead and put it in that area that are aligned with that number. Um, for one, we're gonna look at the future edition on the site plan. We have the faith cor courtyard, so if you have any ideas, suggestions, um, or comments there. We have that Baltimore Avenue engagement that Sandy mentioned, as well as that Main Street engage engagement. So any concerns that you've seen that we might not have addressed or um, comments that you'd like to add there. And then the campus quad, as Sandy mentioned, we're gonna reference that as the quad, that's the parking area, um, as well as engaging that play area, which we have labeled as number six. But if there's anything else on the site that we haven't labeled that you'd like to make note of, just go ahead and write it on the post-it and what you're referencing there. Um, we are also gonna look at some interesting areas to look at identifying the needs with different learning environments for schools. So since we're expanding and looking at the possibility of an addition, we're gonna gain some square footage. So we're able to look at possibly having a, um, a maker space or a project lead delay classroom for your students. So we have a variety of images um, on these boards that you can take a green dot and say, oh, I, I love this image. I love how this classroom is large, has the large maker space, you know, has the tables with computers added or wherever it might be. You can put your green dot on those images and write a note with it if you feel free um, to go ahead and do that. Or you can grab one of us. Um, we'll all be around the boards and you can ask us questions as well um, on those. And then we're gonna look at the courtyard and outdoor learning. So we have a variety of images for those as well, of how we can engage that courtyard space, whether it be um, with just more variety of seating or play area, with some outdoor grow, growing for whether it's culinary or growing some vegetables or fruit, um, as well as that outdoor learning experience. So we have a variety of images here to get your feedback on what you feel would be most important for the school or nice to have. Um, and we're also gonna have a comment card, which we've placed up front, we've placed them in the back. So if you don't get a chance, or there's something that's not addressed on the boards that you feel needs to attention to it, please go ahead and write it on the comment card and leave it for us. Um, as well as after we do this exercise for about 15, 10, 15 minutes, we're gonna have a group share out with any questions you have for us as the lead committee or the, the leadership, um, and then yeah, we will move on from there. So we're gonna go ahead and get up and feel free to either, the, the stations are the same, so they each have the same amount of the boards and then we have the plans over here as uh, Sandy mentioned. So we have two stations, but they have the exact same thing on the board. So go ahead and pick a station um, and we will walk around and hand you the dots and we have the post-its and everything over there as well. And I believe the pins were in the back if you need to grab a pin. Um, and there's also some sharpies. Yes, in about 15 minutes. Yeah, we'll give you a warning. We'll give you plenty of time to go ahead and go on. Yeah, we'll give you a warning. Yeah, we'll give you a warning. 